Hi, I'm Andy Parkin, Managing Director of the multi-award winning Speed Screed. I'm here today to answer a question. Uh, the question is, we have a screed that is weak, cracking or badly dusting. Is it necessary to replace the screed? Uh, so this is uh, a, a call that we uh, that we probably get a couple of times a month. Uh, somebody's got an issue with a with the screed, and the first uh, reaction is, do does it need to come out? Do we need to get rid of it? And I I think you've got to examine the causes uh, initially rather than just looking purely at the symptoms. But what caused? the screed to do that. You could replace the screed and exactly the same thing happens. So it's important just to just to look at those, uh, you know, the, the actual causes of it and not just the actual symptoms. So if we if we look at the reasons why screed fails, you know, why does it crack? Why does it become dusty? Why is it friable? Uh, you know, you could be uh, laying it in adverse conditions, so it could be freezing. Uh, so the, the the water freezes, so there's not the access to uh, for placement. You're getting bits of pockets of frost, uh, ice that might be within. It could then uh, freeze and and expand. You know, ice expands by uh, around about nine percent. So uh, it, it could expand and you could get cracking. It could be uh, friable on the surface and, and dusty. And then the, the water isn't available to the cement to hydrate it. So that could be an issue. The other end of it is it's that it's too hot. So it's too hot and it's actually taking the, the moisture out of it. So it's drying too quickly. So that uh, could make the, the screed in itself weak and, weak and dusty. The wrong materials might have been specified, so the wrong screed. So if it's the wrong screed, uh, it's not supposed to go in at that particular depth, or there's there's some other reasoning behind uh, why it's been specified. It could be a certain strength that's required. Then that could be uh, the reason why you're experiencing those kind of failures. The screed is only going to be as good as the substrate that it's on. So if the substrate is not sound, it's not dry, it's contaminated, it's dusty, especially if you're bonding to it, then you're going to have issues with your screed. It may be that you're not uh, going directly onto the, uh, say it's a concrete substrate, but you're going onto insulation. If the insulation isn't uh, stable, if it's rocking, if it's not uh, tightly buttered, then you're going to have uh, issues with that. So if the substrate is not stable, the, the screed's not going to be stable, and it's going to break. Uh, it's going to break down over time. Too much, too much, or too little water. So we we covered not having enough water in terms of it uh, drying out, but it might be the mix initially. It's not being mixed with the with enough water, or it's dried out too quickly, so it's not going to hydrate. Too much water in the mix is going to mean that you're going to have uh, more shrinkage cracking. You, you you're potentially going to have issues of uh, where the, the screed is going to be weak. If the screed isn't cured, so if you have got warm temperatures, so it's recommended that you would put a curing membrane over the top of the screed to keep the moisture in. If uh, that doesn't happen and the screed dries out, then you're going to suffer from lack of hydration. So, uh, cement particles are not going to be hydrated. It could be poor mixing practice. So sometimes screed is mixed on site with just a shovel uh, onto a board and then just, just mixed. Sometimes a free fall mixer is used, and what you end up with is you, you get the balling, you don't get the mixing. So, either of those two methods are not satisfactory. It may be that somebody's got the, the mix ratios incorrect, and you've not got enough cement in the mix. So, that's why it, uh, you know, it can fail through possibly a lack of strength. The grading uh, and quality of the sand is very important. So it needs to be of a, of a good grading. So with having uh, enough of the, the sand on the higher end of the grading to give it its, its strength, but then having a good grading throughout to 
fill all the all the voids. And so if you if you imagine if you was to use say like a building sand, you'd end up with a lovely smooth uh, finish to it, but there'd be no body and no strength actually in the screed. So you'd end up with a, a weaker screed. The sand can be have, have silt and lignite in as, as well, which can cause issues uh, there as well. So the quality of the sand is, is very important too. Compaction of the screed. If uh, it's a sand and cement screed, then generally it's recommended to, uh, via the British standard, to compact in layers of 50 mil. So you must compact in those layers, otherwise you'll end up with uh, perhaps a, a nice uh, surface, but then underneath it's it's then weak and starts to starts to break down. Early trafficking of screeds is something that often causes uh, a breakdown. So that can be uh, foot traffic, it can be loading, uh, it could be point loading, just step ladders, etc. onto screed will cause damage to the matrix of the screed. Stress relief joints are very important within screed. The product will shrink. Anything with water in will shrink as it, as it dries and you need uh, stress relief joints in there to minimize the risk of shrinkage cracking. Shrinkage cracking is probably 80, it causes 80% of all cracking in, in screeds. And so by uh, actually placing stress relief joints in, you actually minimise uh, the risk of shrinkage cracking. Uh, did the screed have movement joints in? So if uh, a movement joint is different to a stress relief joint, a movement joint is to factor in the movement of the building. So it's, ex it's external movement that you're looking at. So if the substrate has a, uh, a movement joint in there, that must be mirrored into the screed. Otherwise, you may find that uh, it will actually end up putting a movement joint in itself and, and cracking. Uh, whilst the screed is moving, it's important that you have edging strips in place. So anything that the screed touches vertically, be it walls, uh, be it columns, anything that's a restraint in the screed needs to have uh, edging strip wrapped around, so that's like an ether foam, or at the edges sometimes uh, you'll use insulation, but it just needs to have some give to it to allow it to move. Uh, Leveling screeds are generally non-wearing surfaces. There are some that will be wearing surfaces, but in general they're not wearing surfaces and should always be protected from the point of laying the screed to the point of laying the floor coverings. Uh, damage is, is often, from site traffic etc, is often uh, caused at this point when protection isn't, isn't used. So it needs to be protected right through until those floor coverings go on, as you're likely to see some form of damage to the screed. The other type of cracking that sometimes you'll see is thermal cracking, so due to thermal movement. So the screed only will move uh, twice, so it moves initially during shrinkage and then the, the product is then deemed to be inert. After uh, shrinkage cracking, the only other time it will move is through external forces, be it uh, heat passed through the screed, so a, a heated screed, or the building moves in some way, heave, or, or some other stresses that are placed on the screed. If it's thermal cracking, uh, so it could crack just when the, the heat is introduced because there aren't sufficient joints in the screed. Alternatively, it could be that you've got two uh, areas that have been heated uh, and at different temperatures and you can get differential thermal cracking because they're, they're obviously expanding at different rates. So you could get the cracking in between uh, rooms that have been operated at different temperatures. These are, are just some of the uh, some of the causes. So you can see that what you don't want to do is just purely uh, remedy the symptoms and then end up having the same uh, the, the same issue. But depending on what the actual cause was, uh, you may be able to repair. Now, when we talk about 
cracks, uh, the British Standard States, generally hairline cracks, don't necessarily need to be repaired. So if you think you've got a hairline crack and uh, it's stable, the screen is stable, both sides of the crack, there's, there's nothing that's, uh, that's, that's wobbling, there's no point uh, where the screed has become isolated, then generally you can leave that, uh, that cr hairline crack alone. The, the rule of thumb normally is half a mil or a, a credit card. If you can get uh, a credit card into the crack, then it's probably recommended as a rule of thumb that uh, you, you should use some repair compound uh, to remedy the, the actual crack. If you've got a hairline crack, it's quite extreme to then look at repairing it because what you'd have to do is you'd have to open that crack, which is going to be a two or three mil opening you're going to need to put in to allow a, a repair compound to go in. So you, you're taking something that's no more than a hairline and then making it a two or three mil. So, as I say, uh, hairline cracks may not be needed to uh, be repaired. Certain shrinkage cracks you may also leave as well if it's a floating floor. Uh, it may not uh, require. The time when you perhaps need to look at it is if it's a heated screen and it's closing and opening. So that might be a, a factor depending what the floor, the floor coverings are. So if we're going to repair these cracks, we would probably use a, a low viscosity resin. There are other products on, uh, but I think this is the, the most widely accepted and easiest product to, uh, to work with. So you'd look, if the crack is fairly wide, you'd look at bulk filling the crack with kiln dried sand uh, and then pour the resin in. Uh, the resin, leave it to settle for kind of 10, 15 minutes and then top up again, uh, wait again, and if you need to top up again, re repeat, the, repeat the process. For a general weak screed, so if you're seeing the, the, the screed breaking up, and you've got to take the, uh, you've got to look at it, does it need to be replaced, or can I use a, a penetrating resin? So if you was using a, a penetrating resin, this again is a low viscosity resin, that uh, seeps into the, the matrix of the screed. Uh, it needs to be op uh, open textured to be able to do this, so it may need some uh, mechanical uh, preparation to the surface of the screed. The uh, resin pours in and uh, solidifies and makes the surface of the, the, the screed uh, a lot stronger and increases the overall strength to it. So that's that's one way of, of uh, dealing with an issue. It tends to be more expensive than actually replacing the screed, but depending on the circumstances, it may be the preferred option. So sometimes removing the screed might be uh, the solution, but what you might do is you might just look if it's localized damage. So if you was to look at the, you know, probably uh, an area that gets damaged the most, which might be an entrance to a building, so it's taking the most foot traffic, it's taking the most loads as people are coming into the building with, uh, with supplies, etc., and point loading at that point. So what it might be is it might just be uh, the case of actually cutting out, a, you know, a metre square and then replacing that particular section rather than taking the whole of the screen out. So you would need to look whether it's localised damage or whether there's an, an inherent problem throughout all of the screen. But generally, uh, spot repairs are, are going to be the most cost effective and get you uh, sort of moving quicker uh, through without having to replace the whole of the screen and go through the, uh, the, the drying process yet again. So I hope that's... Uh, answered the, the, the question. If you have any further questions uh, and want any further advice, then just uh, please contact us. We'd be happy to help. Thank you.